Hello and welcome to another EG Recap. I'm Jack Lindsay, and if I sound a little bit different today, it's because I now have a proper windscreen. Should take care of those plosions, I hope. I think I'm going to start dedicating these episodes at the start of them. And today's is dedicated to... All of you, for restoring just a little bit of my faith in humanity. You see, my last recap was over a somewhat contentious subject, and I'd seen so many nasty comments on the site, I was a little bit disheartened. But you know how they always say it's a tiny minority that's the loudest and nastiest? I've always heard that, but I've actually watched that be true in practice through making these recaps. Because the vast majority of comments are always constructive, understanding, helpful, engaging, and the crappy ones, the ones that clearly didn't pay attention to what was said or just didn't care, they really have turned out to be a minority. And yet those kinds of voices can seem so ubiquitous for some reason. But it's just a trick. We're all better off than we realize. So thank you, EG readers and watchers, and listen along as I've got three stories for you today. Up first, Minecraft now has 112 million players a month. Then, Demon Pit gets a free demo available now. And lastly, Game Producer defends Project Resistance. Let's jump right into it, shall we? We're starting off with Mr. Irwin and his article, Minecraft, 10 years later, 112 million players a month. When I first picked up Minecraft in 2011, he says, I had no idea just how big the game was going to get. I saw a fun game that combined my desire for a survival experience with the encouragement of creativity, and like many indie games, I thought it was going to be a niche title for a handful of gamers. Fast forward to 2019, when it's been revealed that Minecraft is now seeing a consistent 112 million players a month among all the platforms it's available on. For a game that old, that's insane and it dwarfs the top numbers of even World of Warcraft when it hit its peak of 12 million players during 2010's Cataclysm. And then it was all downhill from there. In 2014, Microsoft bought indie developer Mojang and Minecraft for an, at the time, insane $2.5 billion. The gaming world watch in awe as things changed hands. Marcus Notch Person went on to be a billionaire, and the future of Minecraft was uncertain. $2.5 billion for a single studio and game seems like a leap of faith, but one that's definitely paid off. So what's the secret to Minecraft's continued success? Since Microsoft's acquisition, updates have been coming out at a steadier rate that add both quality of life and new content for players, providing players, whether they be fans of survival mode or creative mode, with more tools to enjoy their game has made it a virtual game of building blocks that rewards players for the ideas they have with the satisfaction that their vision is now realized in whatever structure, farm, or general project they've built up. Helen Chang, studio head for Minecraft, stated in an interview with Business Insider that what has made Minecraft such a success is that it has a charm that people keep coming back to. It may not always be one that's in the forefront, because there are a lot of great games that continue to come out, but it's one they love to return to. Helen may very well be onto something, as years later, Minecraft has definitely earned status with me, where I return to it off and on when I need a relaxing experience. Me being as Mr. Irwin, I've actually never played it. I'll come back and continue expanding on a compound, or maybe even make a new stave and start fresh if I've been absent for a long period. With a player base continuously on the rise, with no signs of plateauing in sight, I think it's fair to say, don't call it a comeback, because Minecraft has been here for years. Earlier this year, Tyler Krasnai recapped the timeline of the rise of Minecraft into the household name it's become today. It's a piece that follows the game from its early stages, all the way through the first half of 2019. And Mr. Irwin has linked to that article in his article, which will be linked to below, and I have I highly recommend that article. I feel like it's one of Mr. Krasnai's strongest articles. Kind of like a history lesson on the game. For our next story, also by Mr. Irwin, Demon Pit Demo, available now. Do you like fast-paced FPS games? Do you like killing demons? If you answered yes to either of these, there's a new demo available on Steam you may want to check out for the recently announced game Demon Pit. Coming from indie publisher Digerati and developed by Psychic Software and Doomcube, Demon Pit is an arena shooter with two things in mind. Butcher the demons of hell, kill them with style. If you've never played an arena-based FPS, basically you're just thrown into the fray against waves of enemies that get increasingly more difficult as you go. Demon Pit lets players experience the first six waves of the game in which hell throws more demons at you, as well as shifts the map around you as you play. There's no story outside of setting the stage in the game's description on Steam, as well as its feature details, which read as follows. Arise, demon hunter, it is time. The years you spent slaughtering demon kind in the mortal world did little to cleanse your 
soul. Your sins have been laid bare and you've been judged. You're damned for eternity. The Pit Awaits. Inspired by the fast-paced FPS games of the 1990s, Demon Pit is an intense arcade-style arena shooter. Armed with a series of ranged weapons and a soul grapple, you must fight and outmaneuver endless waves of demons in a constantly changing environment. How long can you survive before they rip your flesh and claim your soul? The demo has 10 enemy types, 7 weapons, what sounds pretty much like a grappling hook, a constantly changing environment, and score multipliers and leaderboards. While it's hard to judge any arena shooter by its open Opening waves, Mr. Irwin says he enjoyed the retro aesthetic that was reminiscent of older FPS games. He was particularly impressed by the changes on the map, large and small, during the duration of the demo, culminating in the map suddenly being engulfed by a lake of fire which forced him onto a central platform. One thing to note out of the enemies, he says, is it just me or are some of the floating demon heads an homage to Megadeth's mascot Vic Rattlehead? Demon Pit will be coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch in addition to Steam at a date yet to be determined. The demo is only available for Steam users and you can download it right here, here being a link in the article linked below. You can also follow their game at Facebook and Twitter, both of which are also linked in the article below. Mr. Irwin also gives us our third story, Game Producer Defends Project Resistance. Resistance. To say Capcom's Project Resistance reveal was met with mixed reception would be a major understatement. After speculation that Project Resistance could be anything from a new mainline Resident Evil to a resurgence of the Resident Evil Outbreak titles, it was revealed that Project Resistance is actually a 4v1 asymmetrical experience that exists as a new spin-off in the franchise set sometime before the Raccoon City T-Virus outbreak. Fans of the series are incredibly wary of spin-off titles as Capcom's success with the main storyline hasn't translated well into side projects. Operation Raccoon City and Umbrella Corps were two of the latest spin-offs and the most abysmal experiences of the entire series. Games that were supposed to put us in the role of Umbrella operatives, shedding light on the global corporation that serves as the main antagonistic body for the series, were instead poorly designed and janky messes. Fans are right to be concerned about another spin-off that looks to be shedding light on Umbrella's experience. Producer Matt Walker of Capcom doesn't see it that way, however, and took his thoughts about the upcoming game to Twitter. Now we've got that linked in the article below, but it's such a big tweet he had to reply to it four times to get everything he wanted to say, so I'm not going to put it up on screen. Just listen along. Quote, been seeing a lot of people who are not pleased with the idea that we're making Project Resistance. It's totally valid that people want more of that quality core experience offered in RE2 and RE7. My take, we as a company need to continue to branch out and try to offer up new gameplay in addition to refining experiences that people expect from us. If we just continue to offer up the same thing over and over again, people will gradually lose interest with what we're making. Project Resistance offers up a really interesting way to do that. The most important part? That it's a great survival horror experience, if non-traditional. I think we confuse things when we make things related to IP that don't actually stay true to the core spirit of that IP, but this project happily doesn't fall into that trap. I can't wait till the closed beta to have more people actually play it and see how it's a refreshing new take but very surely a survival horror at its core. People who've played it have been positive, and I hope during CBT even more people will have fun playing it. We're also earnestly trying to get the feedback of people who've played it so we can actually make it better, which I feel is fairly rare from a publisher of our size. That's true. Based on that feedback, it could grow from a project into a fantastic game." End quote. Response to the thread of tweets where Matt Walker defended the game was about as mixed as the reception to the initial announcement, but Walker seems fairly confident that the closed beta coming in October will begin to win hearts and minds, and that its core, while a different sort of Resident Evil experience, is going to be a good one that sufficiently fits the desire for horror. For those out of the loop, Exclusively Games has covered Project Resistance a few times since it was initially teased. From the reveal of the first trailer to a breakdown of the first official gameplay footage, the decision for Capcom to make a new spin-off title after the success of Resident Evil 2 Remake earlier this year seems like a vote of confidence on their part that this spin-off will be different. Based on everything we know so far, what are your feelings on Project Resistance? Will it break the trend of bad spin-offs within the franchise, or do you think it, it's already a shambling undead corpse? Let us know down below. If you're interested in the possibility of getting into the closed beta, registrations are now open at the Project Resistance website, and we've got the link to that in the article below. And that'll do it for today's EG Recap. We're now getting such a flood of news that I can only realistically hope to cover a small piece of it in each of these. So before I close each episode out, I think I'll start giving previews of some of the other news articles I didn't have room to cover that are waiting for you on the site. We've got evidence that Bandai Namco is filing some new trademarks, one of which may or may not involve Splatterhouse. There's a report on the successful launch of Gears 5, a hotfix for Borderlands 3 cloud save issues, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 coming to the Switch this September, a look inside one of GameStop's redesigned 
stores. That one's pretty cool. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot gets an open world trailer featuring Badman Vegeta. Hearthstone Pro caught qualifying for auto chess tournament in Grand Masters League match. A new Mortal Kombat film has begun production. The Dino Crisis fan project gets a new trailer. Mr. Irwin gave a really comprehensive breakdown of the beta for phase one of Modern Warfare. And there's a new Mega Man game in development. And if any of that sounds like it's piqued your interest, go ahead and click on over to the site because it's rightly helpful for us. Speaking of which, so are likes, comments, shares, and subscribes. So lay them on me. I'll have some more news for you tomorrow, technically later today. We've slipped past midnight as I've been recording this, but I'll see you then.